I am from TileDB. We are very excited to be here and to have partnered with L7 to bring uh, TileDB Cloud's single-celled solution to the enterprise science platform. Cool, it works. Um, so I'm going to talk about that today, but as you will see, TileDB is a, a universal data management system, so there, there's opportunities to expand into other areas uh, that complement ESP's uh, suite of tools. So I was going to start off to talk a little bit about um, our company and who we are, in case you, you haven't heard of us. Uh, so TileDB was initially a research project started by our founder Stavros when he was at uh, MIT and Intel Health. And this may be of interest to this group, but it was originally developed through a collaboration with the Broad Institute, who was trying to solve the N plus one problem uh, that occurs in, in population genomics. They're looking for a more efficient way to add samples to existing BCF data sets. And so Stavros developed this, this new technology. It's called uh, Genomics DB. It's been part of GATK now for, for many years. Uh, and he spun out that work into a separate company, TileDB, to build this universal storage uh, system based on the same technology. And we are, we are 50 individuals now. We are very well capitalized. So we have a number of different investors uh, and some strate strategic partners, including Amgen Ventures and uh, Lockheed Martin. Um, and we have customers from a variety of different domains, but within the life sciences, we're working closely with uh, Rady Children's Hospital in San Diego, uh, Helix Genomics, uh, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, and Nanostring. And so we, we bill ourselves the universal data platform because our core storage engine and the data format make it possible to model and efficiently query basically any type of data you could throw at it. So tables, genomic variants, uh, images, time series data, they can all be stored in TileDB and then queried with a common API. And at the core, well, a, a core tenet of TileDB is uh, interoperability. So the, the storage engine itself, it's a C++ library, and we build on top of that to provide APIs and R, Python, Java, um, Go, MariaDB, others I'm forgetting right now that are also very useful. But you can store your data once and then you can access it from any of these different APIs. And because they're all built on the same library, you get the same excellent performance regardless of which one you're using. And we also have a data management platform. I'm going to talk about that um, in more detail in a bit. But Another key aspect of TileDB is it's built to be cloud native. So it was built to be used efficiently with remote object stores like S3. So you can store your data in arrays on S3, and then you can query directly from there. No extra server software is needed. You can just use TileDB Core's embedded library, and you can slice data directly from any remote object store you're, you're working with. And so the, the secret sauce for us is we're using this columnar format to model multi-dimensional arrays. Um, so we can store everything in multi-dimensional arrays, and it affords us enormous flexibility. So, for example, we can store um, sparse and dense data. We support both of those natively. So if you are working with data that's naturally sparse, we only record uh, the non-empty coordinates on disk, so there's no inflation. And each dimension of the array is indexed for fast query performance. Uh, and with sparse arrays, you have a lot of options in terms of how you index the data. So, of course, you can use uh, integers, but you can also use floats, you can use dates, times, uh, and even arbitrary strings. And that, that is very useful for use cases like, you know, let's say an RNA-seq count matrix, and you want to query directly using gene symbols or, or sample IDs without having to go through that intermediary step of mapping to an integer index. So here's a couple of concrete examples for us. Um, so biomedical imaging has become a, a major area of interest for us. Uh, so this includes things like histology, microscopy, and other imaging modalities. And we can store this data in dense arrays where every pixel from the image is stored in a cell along with any RGB values or, or other attributes and it's a very natural representation for, um, for images. But if you're working with 
say, genomic variant data. Well, this is data that's very naturally sparse, so we use a sparse array to represent this data, and we index each variant based on its chromosome, chromosomal position, and then sample identifier. And for the chromosome and sample dimensions, we can use strings. Uh, so it's very easy to run queries for something like, you know, give me all variants for sample A on chromosome one. Again, you don't have to do any, any mapping to intermediate integer indices. You can use those string labels directly. Uh, and for single cell data, um, the story is similar. This is data that's very naturally sparse. So you, you're working with these very large, very sparse 2D matrices. And so we store them in TileDB arrays, indexed based on their feature ID or gene ID and their sample ID. So, I'm gonna skip some of this for time, but this, this shows how we, we took this core technology and we built a universal data platform. So, on top of this TileDB embedded core library, we built TileDB, TileDB Cloud. That's our SaaS product. Um, it can also be deployed on-prem. And this provides things like uh, data cataloging, access control, uh, simple point-and-click sharing so you don't have to mess with uh, IAM roles, and a uh, serverless compute platform so you can easily scale and create distributed pipelines. Uh, and from there, you have access to all of our APIs as well as is our integrations with distributed compute services like Dask and Spark and machine learning libraries. And so I mentioned we have customers using TileDB today for population genomics data. Um, so one of those is Rady Children's Hospital and they are pioneering this expansive newborn screening initiative and they're using TileDB to store all of their clinical genomic data. Um, Helix Genomics also uses TileDB for their variant data and they're storing hundreds of thousands of genomes uh, in single arrays and they're routinely performing these mass exports across millions of curated variants for all of the different cohorts they're working with which they can create on the fly. So there's no need to create uh, you know, bespoke PVCF files for each of these different analyses. They can store the data once. For single cell, we have partnered with the folks at CZI who built the cell by gene portal um, to create a, a new open source data model for, for single cell data that uses TileDB arrays, and this is called SOMA. Um, it's already been adopted by uh, Nanostring, who's using it for their new spatial molecular imaging platform, because they're generating these beautiful, massive data sets and they wanted to be able to take advantage of cloud storage for publishing and distributing them. And interesting ordering PowerPoint. Uh, so we have talked to a lot of different organizations who are generating single cell data or curating existing single cell data sets, and we hear a lot of the same pain points over and over. Um, one of the big ones is data sharing and integration is difficult to do, because the format that these data sets are published in is usually determined by the tool chain that was used, right? So Python users tend to use AND data or H5AD files. Our users use Surat or Bioconductor, which have their own formats, uh, and they're not interoperable with each other. Um, the other issue is the technology is involved to a point where we are routinely generating data sets that are just too large to load on your laptop, and they're cumbersome to share. Um, especially when you're talking about atlas scale data, such as the, the corpus that uh, Cell by Gene is working on. You know, already their corpus has 26 million cells. This is too large for existing formats. It, they run into scaling issues. And so we are working with them to build SOMA. So this is a, our open source language agnostic data model. And they chose TileDB because well, A, we are language agnostic, right? We have a lot of different APIs you can use. We're cloud native, so you can use uh, something like S3 to distribute your data sets. And we could provide the query performance they needed for these multi-million cell data sets. And so the, the data model is, it's, it's open source, it's available on GitHub. We value community feedback greatly, and we've received a lot of it. Um, 
we don't have time to go into the data model in detail, but it, it shares a lot of features and semantics with other single cell frameworks like AND data or, or Surat. Um, but on disk, each of these different components in the single cell data set is stored in an individual TileDB array indexed by the feature ID or the cell ID. And so we are jointly indexed across all these different components, which means you can easily slice across the entire data set. And we currently have APIs for both R and Python. These are available today on GitHub. They're fully interoperable with each other, so you can store your data in the TileDB Vaxoma created in Python and then read it back in uh, into R. Um, the interoperability also extends to the single cell tool chains themselves. So we have IO methods for ingesting data from existing formats, and we also allow you to read the data back from a SOMA into the in-memory formats used by these different tool chains. Uh, so in this example, we're showing how you can take an existing H5AD file and then convert it to a SOMA. So the only thing you need to provide is a URI, which determines where the data will physically live. And in this case, we're using a, a special URI that's composed of a TileDB Cloud username and the S3 bucket. And so what happens is when you run the ingestion, it ingests all of the data into a SOMA on S3, and it registers it with TileDB Cloud. And so the data set will show up in TileDB Cloud's UI, which looks like this, where it's, it's fully indexed, and it becomes part of the data cataloging service. Um, and so from here, you know, with one click, you can share this data set with an individual, with an organization. You can make it publicly available. And you can access it securely with the TileDB Cloud uh, URI. So this is the special URI we provide that goes through all of our authentication controls, so you have secure access to it. Um, so here we're, we're looking at a Python example of how you can access an existing SOMA using the query method we provide, which gives you a lot of options for retrieving just the data you want from a SOMA. Um, and again, this can be directly on S3, so you can slice by feature ID, cell ID, and you can also filter by any of the cell or feature annotations that are stored in the SOMA. So in this case, we're slicing out all cells that have been annotated as platelets. Um, in addition, TileDB is columnar, so you always have control over which columns from the arrays are read into memory. Um, this has important performance implications when you're working with remote data stores. So you always have control over exactly what data will be read into memory. And finally, as I mentioned, when you run these kinds of queries, you have the option to load it into an in-memory format that's compatible with existing single cell tool, tool chains. So here we're working with Python. We can return that result as an AND data object. So now you can continue on with your analysis using ScanPy. So it's, it's designed to you know, very seamlessly integrate into your existing pipelines. You're just using this new on-disk format for the actual storage. And these analyses can be performed directly on TileDB Cloud. So we offer hosted Jupyter Notebooks, hosted dashboards. The instances they run on include all the popular single cell analysis packages that, that you would need. Uh, in addition to that, you can leverage TileDB Cloud's serverless compute platform. So uh, here's an example of that where we're working with the Tabula Sapiens data set. So this includes 25 different tissues each one has been ingested into its own soma, and we want to run a query that pulls out the macrophages from each of those tissues. So we can very easily use TileDB Cloud's uh, serverless API to build out a task graph that runs that same query on each of these tissues in parallel. So it's all performed uh, serverlessly, so each circle you're seeing, seeing here in this graph represents a node that's spun up on demand and then shut down when the operation's finished, so you only pay for the, the compute that you need. Um, this is a relatively simple example. The, the API is very powerful, and you're able to use it to build out you know, fairly complex workflows that, again, can be fully distributed. So I will I'll stop there. Um, Happy to chat about anything we, we cover here if you want to uh, discuss outside during the, the coffee break. Um, yeah, glad to be here. Thanks for your attention.